Hello, Elizabeth Bolund. Hello, Rasesh Sainedin. What are you doing here? I am working in the kitchen garden. Okay. So, today I am planting some mint, peppermint, Moroccan mint and apple mint that I brought from our old home. Mm -hmm. And they have been fairly surviving in here. You see the state of the poor ones. Yeah. And now they're going to be put in this big patch. So, uh -huh. I've just dug this out. dug a bit you see there's a lot of like clay yeah. here it's quite compact so I've broken it up a bit yeah. and then I removed the soil here so and it's, it's not that deep the I mean I just I just dug down like yeah. like this but what I meant is yeah. that the the root oh, layer stops very really quickly shallow you basically yeah. this is the root layer here yeah. that's it and so. The beauty of living where so we how, do now. So how, how, how many centimeters is this roughly? Yeah, it's less than 10. Okay. Yeah, yeah up to 10, 10 centimeters, I would yeah. say. Yeah. So when I'm done with this, I'll have a whole wheelbarrow of these. Yeah. And what I can do when we live like we do now, Yeah. I'll just put it in a corner of the garden that we've designated to the compost. Yeah. We haven't even made a, you know, we just make a pile. We'll yeah. make it fancy later. Yeah. In our old home, this would have needed to be taken to the recycling because there was nowhere to put it. Yeah, sure, sure. So, yeah, I've planted a bunch of other plants previously. In Could the you show us quickly? As well. So here we've got... So uh, there's a big rock here, I guess it provides a microclimate from absorbing solar radiation and releasing it later. Yeah, so I'm planting things so the peppermint can have shade part of the day, so that's yeah. on a bit the shady side. Yeah. Here is a classical Swedish uh, herb that's called the bouillon plant in Swedish mm -hmm. um, so you just use it in stocks and soups uh -huh. this is Arunia mm -hmm. the Latin name is also Arunia something mm -hmm. it has edible berries mm -hmm. here I've rescued from our previous garden a bunch of different things mm -hmm. some are wild ones that came even from my previous garden before our previous garden mm -hmm. Uh, the daisies and the bluebells mm -hmm. and then there's some strawberries, some tarragon, some chalixot, I don't know the English name, it's actually edible but mm -hmm. it's mainly grown ornamental, it's also wild in Sweden. Mm -hmm. This is thyme, mm -hmm. these are my little, I just put those in today, oh. some of our, those are from my mother's uh, summer cottage that yeah. I planted with her when I was 15. They look like some kind of succulents. Yeah, they're succulents. So we planted them together, my mother and I, mm -hmm. and then I've rescued some always mm -hmm. since then. And these are some potted plants. They're going to die. They're just here because I didn't have space for them inside. Yeah. Uh, here is more peppermint that I planted a week ago. And yeah. you see this is really healthy looking. Yeah. And then over here we've started. I guess this is a massive rhubarb from before. Yeah, that's a really nice one. It really thrives here. And then there was a couple of these frames, Kalkragar, for growing things in. Mm -hmm. This one I've left because this is actually a wild edible plant that can substitute lemon. Oh. And then I planted some sage and some thyme. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that is berries, syra mm -hmm. or engsyra in Swedish, mm -hmm. the one, the wild one. Then there's here's some onions that I planted early in the okay. season. That's cool. And some more of this chalixot I mentioned from our old garden, yeah. and a uh, hosta, uh, yeah, is... which is edible in spring. This I've been meaning to look it up. It's also left from previously. Yeah. It had really beautiful, bright um, pink flowers yeah. uh, when we were here in June, I think. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And then I planted some Jerusalem or artichokes all the way over there where we right. have another rock providing microclimate. Yeah. I could see that the red currants that have yeah. self-seeded here, they ripened very early. Yeah. So then this should be a nice protected spot for the Jerusalem artichokes because they will oh, yeah. not start so flowering these, until these after These red frost. currants are already ripe and the ones yeah, I've harvested on the farm most of just a couple already. doors down is... Wow, it's because of the microclimate it's from a, the rock and yeah, radiation. It's, it's a big difference, it's two weeks difference. Oh, wow. And these mm. are the, the Jerusalem artichokes, mm -hmm. Yudech Kokka. 
We'll see if they survive the winter. And then some more potatoes here. Oh, we haven't shown the first ones. We can make a separate potato video. Okay. 